Well, I know for a lot of people, their favorite time in Star Wars time is usually revolved around a cute little green alien who likes to eat frogs because he sells really well. Well, for me, it's Tauntaun time. Hey, who doesn't love Tauntaun time? I mean, it means snuggling up and getting a good night's rest, right? Okay, well, we're probably going to be doing a lot of Tauntaun videos over the length of this video series because, well, Tauntauns tend to get remade every once in a while. They're also really popular. They're also really cool. I mean, they're giant space snow lizards that you get to ride around on. And now that we'd had our Luke Skywalker Tauntaun, it was pretty much a, uh, well, established concept that we were going to get the Han Solo version, since it's essentially the same toy, minus a, a slight horn modification and some deco changes. Now, this Tauntaun with Han, same Power of the Force 2 series, same Power of the Force 2 action feature, where you press down on the back of the saddle and it causes the legs to run in a very cool Tauntaun gait kind of way. Well, I guess only Tauntauns have a Tauntaun gait, really. I mean, if another animal did, it would be a Tauntaun, wouldn't it? Is that kind of how, like, you know, nature works? Every animal has its own gait? I don't know. I'm not Darwin. The point is, Tauntauns are awesome. They've had lots of features. They've had split bellies. They've had running... They've had details, they've had articulation, they've had super articulation, and as I said, we're going to be doing quite a few Tauntaun videos as we go. So I'm not going to focus this one too much on the Tauntaun, because honestly, there were going to be better Tauntauns in different scales that are going to come out over the next few years. In fact, one of the Tauntauns that came out at the same time as this Power of the Force 2 one was this 12-inch scale Tauntaun that was a Toys R Us exclusive that was going for hundreds of dollars on the aftermarket. It was one of the first modern Star Wars toys to really do that and made it kind of significant. And we would get more Tauntauns in the Power of the Force 2 line before the name got changed around a little bit, Power of the Jedi, Saga Collection, but eventually we would even get the split belly effect in this Tauntaun in a box set that came out also at Toys R Us. But the best, the best at least 3 and 3 fourth, was probably this Target exclusive set that was called the Search for Luke Skywalker. No split belly, but the articulation was top-notch. But since we're talking about Han Solo's Tauntaun, we should go back all the way to the beginning, since it's really interesting that the Kenner Tauntaun, the very first one, in fact, both of them, were Hans. We never got Luke's. Well, not just being in the way that Hans has both of the horns, but in all of the cross-cell images, we see Han either riding the Tauntaun or a uh, I guess, getting it ready for habitation. So, yeah, poor uh, Luke's Tauntaun never made the toy cut. We always got Han's Tauntaun. But we did get lots of accessories for Tauntauns, meaning lots of soldiers to ride on them and take care of them and feed them their Tauntaun snacks in Hoth Base because, well, Hoth Base generated a lot of action figures. And as a child who grew up in the snow, I grew up in Connecticut, it was like getting a free playset every winter, and being able to bring out my Hoth action figures into my front yard and suddenly be on a Star Wars planet was absolutely mind-blowing and amazing. It was like every year, suddenly Hoth came to the neighborhood, and it was a great way to, you, I'd bring out my, you know, at -AT and I'd bring out my Tauntauns and Wampas and ride around, and, well, I had almost all of them except... I didn't have Hoff Han Solo, and maybe that's part of what's inspiring this video here. Or it could be the fact that the first Hoff Han that we got in the Power of the Force 2 line, well, there was something a little bit odd about him. He wasn't exactly the Hoff Han we were all expecting. And it wasn't because he was packaged upside down in order to recreate when he's hanging in the Wampa Cave. No, I'm sorry, he wasn't. That was Luke. That was just an error. It wasn't just because he was packaged correctly. It was because his hood wasn't up. The very first single release for Power of the Force 2 for Hoth Han had him with his hood down and his hat on, which is a look he really never had. The whole idea of Hoth Han has inspired a lot of controversy. Is he wearing a brown vest or brown jacket? Is he wearing a blue jacket? This goes on and on for years. It really comes down to a lighting effect. I mean, when you see the actual jacket in... Uh, the museum, it looks brown on screen, it looks blue. It's kind of like this Venom figure from Marvel Legends that is decoed to look like a lighting effect. 
lighting effect deco is becoming more and more, or what's called cell shading, very popular. And honestly, Han Solo's jacket is a perfect rendition of live sort of cell shading or live movie lighting represented on an action figure when you see the jacket either be blue or brown. It honestly doesn't matter, especially because it's easy to make both. But the vintage toy established two things, that the jacket was blue and that the hood was up. So while there were a lot of interesting things about the Tauntaun, and, you know, that being that it was Han's Tauntaun and that you'd slide him in and his legs were sculpted as part of the saddle, that's all of the discussion, I have to wonder if he hadn't had his hood up if he was sculpted more like this, would he have been as cool of an action figure? And I honestly have to say no. I think the reason that Han Hoth from the Kenner line in the 80s was one of the most memorable and coolest figures of the line, even if you didn't have him like me, which I don't know how I missed getting this figure. I really do, because I wanted all the snow-based figures. But having a hood up, he was the only figure in the entire line that had this. All the other figures had hats on, if you will. Actually, Princess Leia didn't have anything. She's freezing her ears off. But there was something very personable about the whole hood up. Maybe it's because when I would be sent out to play in the snow, I would basically be forced to wear a jacket like this, or that I would know a jacket like this would actually succeed in keeping me warm. But there was something very tactile about understanding a a, a hood on your head in the snow that just communicated warmth to a child. And if you grew up in a cold environment, you really related to Han Solo and his hood. I know it's such a simple thing, but a hat like this, mm, maybe that's going to keep you a little warm. But a furry hood was a very visual reminder to a child that you were going to be kept warm. And it made Han kind of smarter than your average Hoth Trooper because he was the only one smart enough to have a jacket that had a hood on it that was lined with fur. So a lot of sort of, it made Han a lot smarter in my mind. I don't know if other people felt this way, but having that hood up was a big part of his personality, kind of like shooting first in the cantina. So when we got that original figure in Power of the Force 2 and his hood was not up, this was kind of like not my Han Solo. Which is why I was so glad that this figure was corrected, and for the Tauntaun release, we got him with his hood up. So, as much as we all know that Harrison Ford is a strikingly attractive actor, and, you know, worthy of that remark, still, it's cold out there. You want to keep warm. And it's great that over the years we've had hood up, hood down, black jacket, brown jacket, yellow jacket, blue jacket, with snow, without snow sparkles, you know, extra snow sparkles. But because of that vintage figure, the original one establishing the hood up blue jacket color, to me, that's what makes Han Hoth. And finally getting that figure with the Tauntaun really brought this figure into the modern line for me. This one, to me, was just some other rebel trooper. Maybe it was all those years of freezing in the snow, but enjoying myself. But man, hoods, snow, they just go together like tauntauns and warm bellies. <laughs>